In today's video, I'm gonna be breaking things up into three components. First of all, I'm gonna be looking at the video side of how I produce my videos here on YouTube. Secondly, looking at the audio side, again, of how I produce the videos here on YouTube. And thirdly, I'm gonna be sharing some additional tips and tricks with you just to try and help you if you are thinking of starting a YouTube channel or if you've already got a YouTube channel and you just want a bit more information on how I put together the videos that I make here on the channel for you. A couple of months back, whilst we were in the height of the lockdown here in Melbourne, I asked you on Instagram what you wanted to know about how I make these videos. So I'm gonna structure this as a little bit of a Q&A as I walk around the aircraft and share with you some answers to your questions that you did ask me. So let's start with the topic of visuals. A Marling asked, what mounts do you use for the GoPros for the Cirrus? So let's start on, this is the starboard or the right hand side wing of the aircraft where I have two GoPros mounted. On top of the wing, this is where I have the GoPro Max, the 360 degree camera, which gives you views like this so I can pan left and right. You would have seen it if you've watched videos on this channel. I love this camera, it's really versatile. And the way it mounts into the wing is actually quite straightforward. So this is what's called a spanner plate. It's basically a bracket by a company called N Flight Cam, but it basically screws in to the existing screw holes that exist on the wing here of the SR22. So this bracket stays in place. I never take this off. This then is the GoPro Max, the 360 camera that sits on the wing, but you can see I've just put it in a metal bracket, which I bought off eBay. So all I do before every flight is obviously make sure the GoPro is charged, screw it into the wing, Wing. It then has a nut underneath here which I tighten up and once it's screwed in you can see it's really really tight and securely fixed. It's screwed in with a metal bracket on a camera which is held inside another metal bracket. There's no plastic components that are being held together here. And then underneath the wing I have a very similar setup but it's a different camera so I'm using a standard GoPro. Like I said in this case this is a GoPro Hero 5 bracket but I'm going to replace this for the GoPro Hero 9 instead i'll do that in a second but it's the same thing another spanner plate that sits here screwed into the wing screwed into that is the metal cage that the gopro sits in so all i'm doing is removing the gopro at the end of the day and i'm leaving this bracket fixed onto the aircraft this actually stays on at all times hi steve hi how are you steven is back again to help us put this onto the aircraft so the original camera that i had on underneath yeah, this is the bracket for the GoPro Hero 5, which I've been using up until now. I want to replace it for the 9. Of course, they're different sizes. So, like I said, with the 5, it has a metal bracket on there because I didn't want to trust just a plastic bracket underneath. We've got another metal bracket that's on the outside of the Hero 9. And it's basically just a case of swapping... Well, it's not basically, it's basically a case of asking Stephen nicely because he has the tools and I don't, <laughs> but asking him nicely to change it. All right, that's perfect. Now, the other thing I should mention, Stephen, as well, is the uh, we have engineering orders for these cameras as well on the aircraft. There are some new regulations out there which people do need to check. I believe there's one where you don't need any approval now to fit cameras inside the aeroplane, mm. um, but you still need approval to be outside. And even if you're using the suction cup mount inside the aircraft, like, like Stephen says, I think there are some relaxed regulations, but always check beforehand. Check before but it might be easier to install a, a camera inside than it has been before. But on the outside, it's all about making sure it's yeah. as locked down as possible because we don't want that thing coming off. Yeah, okay, will know about it pretty quick if it falls off. <laughs> yeah. All right, thank you. All good, no Cheers, worries. Mate. I also have two other cameras which are installed inside the aircraft. I don't always use both of them, but I have two options for mounts. I also realized I didn't unlock the plane. Hang on, give me one sec. The first of those interior mounts is just a standard GoPro suction cup, which I normally stick onto the window up here. That gives me a nice view, basically. So you can see my facial expressions. You can see me talking if I'm saying something to the camera. The second camera position that I have inside the aircraft, it's probably the one that I use the least, to be honest, is this one. It's actually bolted to the roof of the aircraft on a ball joint so I can rotate it around in different directions. I thought it would be the one that I would use the most. It's actually, it just turns out to be the one that I use the least. It's just personal preference. I'm not a big 
big fan of that shot from the back of my head looking out the front of the aircraft. Now this round filter that you saw on the front of this camera bracket is the same as the one that I have on the underwing camera. It takes me to another question I had from Pilot GJ. Hi Steph, what ND filters do you use on your GoPros? Well these are both an ND4 filter and if you're not familiar with ND filters it lets less light in which means it slows the shutter speed down and it just gives you that nice blurry effect on the propeller when you're looking out the front of the window so it's less distracting. Okay, a couple of other very quick questions on video. Mason Nordyke, have you ever worried about the camera on your wing flying or falling off mid-flight? No, you can see how securely they are attached to the wing there and I do that because I don't want them to fall off mid-flight so no, I'm not worried about that happening. Ella Dewey, if you only have one camera, where is the best position to get a view of you as well as some outside? I think, Ella, it all depends on what you want to show to the person who's watching the video. If you really want to see your face, because if you're going to be talking to the camera, I'd go for that camera that I have, the suction cup I showed you on the front window, looking back into the cockpit. If you're only looking to pick up your air traffic control calls and you want to show as much of what's going on outside the aircraft as well as inside, then I'd probably have one sitting behind the back of your head looking forwards. I should say on that point as well, I started all of this YouTube stuff just with one camera. Actually, I'll show you the camera I originally... This is the original GoPro Hero. This is a Hero 2, the first GoPro Hero camera that I own. Leads me to a good question from Callum Morgan who said, what is the bare bones setup you need to start vlogging your flights? Well, you can do it with one GoPro camera because I certainly did. So don't worry about having four that I have on this aircraft. You don't need that. One GoPro camera is all you need. You'll need some editing software on your computer, but you can get some really good free ones like iMovie on your Mac is free. You don't need to pay for something like Final Cut Pro, but you need to focus on audio. Audio is gonna be really important for you if you're just starting out, because even if you have the best visuals and you have four cameras on every wing of the aircraft and 360 views, if your audio sucks, people aren't going to watch your video. So, nice segue, and yes, I did plan that, but let's go to the second part of this video because I want to talk to you about audio. Hey Steph, what's the best way to record sound from a headset in flight? Thanks, Ray. Now, I use one of these. This is the Sony Digital Voice Recorder. They all have different names. It's basically an audio recorder that records audio. <laughs> giving you all the top scientific information here on the channel. I wear, not sponsored as any of you who followed me for a long time know, nothing to do with Bose, but I wear Bose A20s. And what I used to do is have a small Lavalier microphone, one of those type-in lapel microphones. I used to put it in the ear cup and put that into this recorder. Worked okay, but you do get a lot of noise from the headset moving around and rattling. What I do now is I've changed my method. Now I have a cable that actually runs from the headphone output in the aircraft into this. This is what's known as a line level adjuster. I'll put a link to the one that I use down in the description below. It basically just means that the output from that headphone port that goes through the line level adjuster into my digital voice recorder like so, it just means that it's not too loud. It compresses the signal slightly so you get a nice clean output which is recorded here on the digital voice recorder. How do you then sync the audio to the video if you're turning the cameras on and off but the audio is rolling throughout the whole flight? Well, I use a technique that's been used in movie making since pretty much the dawn of time. Well, not the dawn of time, but since they started having audio in movies, which is a clapperboard, but I don't have a clapperboard, so all I do is when I've turned my cameras on, I do three claps. And those three claps appear as three peaks on my audio track and it actually becomes quite easy to line that up to the video so my audio and video is synced from that point onwards. Okay, that's video done, that's audio done, but there are still a lot of other questions that you ask me. So now I want to share some of my tips and secrets, a little bit of a behind the scenes of some of the other parts of how I make my YouTube videos. M underscore aviation. Did you buy all of your flying gear at once or did you build up over time? No, built up over time. You don't need to buy, like I've got four cameras audio set up. The camera that I'm using now, sometimes I film on my phone. You don't need all of that, you really don't. One camera and good audio is all you need to make YouTube videos if you're just starting out. So I most definitely built it up over time. Footage and data storage, massive home drive, wow. 
So that wind's picking up. Footage data storage, a massive home drive or a cloud base or a 1,000, one terabyte external drives. Storage becomes a big issue if you are gonna be making YouTube videos. I use lots of small one or two terabyte portable drives and I store them in a secure place that I have. Um, but I don't wanna store everything on one massive drive because I worry if that fails, I lose everything. Equally, I don't wanna store things in the cloud because I've got, well, 30, 40 terabytes worth of data now that I've collected over the years and that's pretty expensive to store in the cloud. I think it's raining. Lockie Halliwell, is it hard juggling filming and flying at the same time? Very good question. The short answer is I don't juggle flying and filming at the same time. I film or I fly. Don't do the two at the same time. It's hard to explain. Let me explain it in a different way, hang on. Okay, you know those sequences you sometimes see on my videos when you see me pre-flighting the aircraft, I'm looking at the oil dipstick, I'm checking things like checking the propeller, doing all, you know all that? I'm not actually pre-flighting the aircraft when I'm doing that. I've already pre-flighted the aircraft. I've already checked the oil. I've already checked the propeller. What I'm doing is I've done the pre-flight, I've made sure the aircraft is ready to go and then I film. So I'm not flying and filming. I'm doing the flying stuff, stopping, doing the filming stuff, stopping, and then getting back into the plane again. Same thing goes with the audio. Remember what I was saying about starting the audio recorder at the beginning of the flight and then leaving it? Well, I do that for a reason because I wanna be turning on and off things as little as possible during the flight itself. The only exception to that is the cameras because they will run out of batteries if you turn them on at the beginning of say a three hour flight. So I do turn them on and off sometimes during the flight, but I'll turn the cameras on before I take off. So I'll turn them on in the run up bay, do all my takeoff, get the aircraft up to cruise, maybe say a couple of things if I want to and then turn them off at that point. I'm not turning them on and off during critical points of flight. And that's a really important point for you if you are flying and filming. Separate the two as much as you can. Next question, Mr. Sebastian Grimm says, do you work out a script and try to get the footage required or shoot and build a story later? I always like to have a purpose for all of my flights and that for me is the story. So I'm not going out there flying and hoping or waiting for something to happen. I want my flying to be drama free and I want the purpose of my flying to be for me to be able to go and seek out stories. So I either have something that I know I'm going to say in the aircraft for that trip or I'm going somewhere to make a story of what's going to happen on the ground. So yes, I have a rough plan of what I'm going to be saying before I, before I get in the aircraft and start filming. Joshua V says, how do you find a balance between getting it good versus getting it done? I've really changed my mindset on that recently. I used to focus so much on getting it done. Like I used to focus on getting two videos out every week and I've really changed a lot recently, probably since this lockdown into getting it good. So you may have noticed I've gone down to one video a week rather than the two that I have and that's because I want to focus on quality rather than quantity. Look, to, to answer your question, how do you do that? I think planning is key. Know what you're going to be making ahead of the time. Know what you're going to be saying before you start filming. Don't just grab a camera, point it somewhere and expect a story to happen around you. Have an idea in your head of what the story is going to be. Plan it in advance and take your time putting it together because your audience will stick around longer, I believe, if your quality is good rather than just if there's a lot of it. Trying to set this shot up so I've got the flags here in the background. That'll become relevant in a second. Any disadvantages being an international streamer rather than one from the US? Rob Kingsland. You know, I used to think so, um, but I haven't found any specific reasons why I'm disadvantaged being down here in Australia rather than being in the US. The only difference is obviously the proximity to other YouTubers. I mean, there's not many of us making content down here in Australia compared to somewhere like the US. So there would be more opportunities for doing collaboration videos maybe if I was in the US but in terms of performance of channel and that sort of thing no I've noticed no difference whatsoever and to be honest I actually prefer having Australia as my kind of unique backdrop I think it lends a bit of a USP to the channel that others may not otherwise have. I've got a question here from someone who wants to remain anonymous and I'm going handheld for a specific reason how do you vlog in public without being embarrassed? 
it's easy to say just practice and I think that's the thing that you quite often hear is the more you do it the easier it will get well that is true but it never gets truly easy if, if that helps I learned this one thing from the Matty Hapoya channel sorry Matty Matty Hapoya he said something which really stuck with me which is just treat the camera like it's a friend just treat the camera like you're talking to someone you know and that's what I do when I talk to you guys if I'm out traveling or in a busy airport or if there are people behind me like there are people in this hangar who are doing other bits and pieces here I'm talking not to a camera like a weirdo talking to himself but I'm talking to a friend and it makes it easier when you're doing that to not feel so self-conscious the other thing I would say is let, let me show you what I'm doing this is the Canon EOS RP it's a fairly big camera it's got quite a big heavy lens on it you can see the microphone at the top as well it looks big if you're walking around like this yeah of course it's going to attract a bit of attention if you want to start out film on your phone you don't need the big heavy camera equipment and someone walking around talking to their phone like this it's just like you're making a FaceTime call if you're worried about how this looks to people use your phone first of all and just walk around talking into your phone if you want to do some handheld stuff on the ground okay final question and one that I need your help with too okay so Sam Cow 7 what's your favorite channel well I'll tell you mine if you tell me yours I want to hear down in the description below what are your favorite YouTube channels for aviation not necessarily the big guys who get a lot of traffic and attention already but tell me some of the smaller channels that you like at this time of the year let's share the love a little bit and maybe subscribe to some of these other channels help them at the end of the year grow what they're trying to do online and help everybody grow an industry that we all love which really needs a little bit of care and attention after a, a pretty horrible year Otherwise, that's all from me. Hope you found those tips useful. Thank you for watching. If you are new to the channel, do feel free to click on that subscribe button. It means a lot to me as well to see this channel grow. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.